my God. I made this new setup for my studio and it's so much better, so much more efficient. I don't know if it's gonna be in this, well, if it's gonna be uploaded first or this is gonna be uploaded first, but I put a brand new lights that I'll show you on my vanity and I just feel way more inspired to film because this is consistent lighting. It's not me going back and forth between the floor and natural lighting and before I had like one light out there, one light out there. Broken lights everywhere, so, oh, Dr. Seuss. But now I just like want to sit down and I feel comfortable doing my makeup. So I just put these eye masks on. These are from Live Tinted Copper Peptide Eye Masks. And the fifth ingredient in here is niacinamide and squalene, which my skin loves squalene. Glycerin will make the makeup stick more, but those are gonna provide the moisture and prevent your under eyes from creasing. If your under eyes prepped correctly, then it's not going to crease as much. So I'm gonna leave those on my under eyes while I'm doing my eyeshadow. I have different features from her. I have thick eyebrows and a more warm and deeper complexion. Hers is very fair and porcelain. So cater this makeup look or inspiration for you. It doesn't have to be exactly, that's why we're doing a inspired look. I wanna make this makeup look look as natural as possible in the sense of just enhancing the natural beauty. So I went in first with the Urban Decay Primer Potion. I'm not blinking out the canvas completely on my eyes. And for the palette today, I thought about using the Makeup by Mario palette. And I'm gonna take a light skin tone colored eyeshadow and sweep this all over the lid and into the crease. I'm actually excited. I really want to watch the movie in theaters because I've only watched it once. Isn't that crazy? I've only watched it once and my heart couldn't take it. And mix in these two colors right here on a Morphe and Jaclyn Hill JH35 brush and start on the outer crease area and go inwards and outwards. I don't want to make this cat eye at all. Just really enhancing the natural structure of my eye. Yeah, that's actually perfect. That's a perfect tone. If I went in with this pink on my eye, it would look a little sickly, to be honest. Uh, those tones don't match or suit me very well. So I just like to add a little bit of warmth. That's why I mixed in that first transition color as well. Now I feel like this is the star of the show. It's very subtle, but it's unique and the word distinctive that's the right word it's very distinctive in this makeup look how she did the eyeliner i'm going to use the maybelline master gel liner and a thin thin brush so i deposit the gel liner first like this on the back of my hand and really warm it up i like gel liner because it's a lot harder to mess up because if you have a liquid liner, if you make one little mistake, then it's just game over. But I'm going to take this on a super thin brush. This is the Katie Jane Hughes and Spectrum 24 brush. I think I should have used actually a smaller, like this is very long, it's like a paintbrush. I think I should have used something a little bit shorter, but all my shorter ones are, they're not as thin as this one. I want it really thin and concentrated because this is the part where I said it's more distinctive in this movie. It's not just a regular eyeliner. What I noticed in the picture is that you could really see her upper lash line, meaning that there's a, there's a separation. This looks like a, like a drawing. Her upper lash line has been outlined by a pencil, quite literally. And that's what I want to emulate with this as well. I am not going to try and create a different eye shape like we usually do with like wings and inner corner eyeliner. I just want to enhance my own eye shape. But I don't want to deepen my actual lash line. I just want to go quite literally on top of it. You see how you can kind of still see my gap in between my lashes and my upper waterline? That's what I wanted to achieve. And when you do your inner corner eyeliner, look in the opposite direction from your mirror so that you can get the most skin with eyeliner. Instead of looking straight ahead, you can get a different line. This is my eyeliner complete, very simple. And 
I just think it's beautiful. I think it was so clever what they did. And maybe not even on purpose, but when you don't do things and you try to be like trendy or whatever, when you don't try is when things come out the best, to be honest. I think so at least, like, because you are just creating your natural creative flow is not being pressured by anything. That's why the, the most beautiful things come from it is because you're truly yourself when you're creating something. I could tell she did not have a layer of mascara on her and if she did, it was like this much. It was like, I'm gonna take my eyeliner again and paint it across my hand so that it's a little bit thinner and warmed up. Because this mascara is not concentrated on her lash line, I'm gonna take it on a spoolie and just comb it through the upper part so that they look super wispy and just deepened up. And this is waterproof too, so if Jack leaves and we fall off, we'll be fine. Under eyes are prepped, and now I'm going to go in with my foundation. And I don't care that this is discontinued because it is the best foundation. Hopefully they come out with something better, but I doubt it. If you love the Hourglass concealer brush or have been wanting to try it, I highly recommend the Real Techniques 421 brush. As you can see, it's flat and dense and it fits perfectly on the under eye without taking away any of the coverage. Now I'm gonna set my under eye with my Maybelline Fit Me pressed powder in the shade 110 porcelain. And this is a great brush actually. This is from BH Cosmetics, the number five brush. I love it. And whenever I'm setting my under eye, what I used to do is go directly in the powder and then set. But even when you're using a powder puff, you do this step. Eyeshadow, anything I put on my face and pick up with a brush, I first work it into my hand and make sure I don't have any creases. And then go inwards and outwards to make sure it's not gonna crease. Now, again, I know she didn't bronze and sculpt her face, but because I wanna bring more life to my skin, I am going to use, let's see. I'm gonna use my Hula bronzer, a tiny bit of this. Ooh, Hula bronzer mixed in with my Physician's Formula butter bronzer. That's gonna be a gorgeous duo. So again, this is the Katie Jane Hughes 05 brush. Working it in my hand, and I'm gonna start a little higher than normal because I'm using a more fluffy brush. It's going to deposit the color right where I want it while it's blending. These are amazing brushes. If you're looking for a good brush to invest in that won't irritate the skin or shed last you a long time. These Katie Jane Hughes and Spectrum brushes are amazing. You don't have to get the full set, but anything that you do get, I know will be worth it. And you, you will use because she's a makeup artist. She knows what brushes are multi-purpose, what brushes you need. And these are just amazing. So even if you are a makeup artist, actually, you should buy these to add to your kit because they're great. thing I'm going to use is a little baking powder. I told you, I know it's not a recreation because she definitely didn't bake on the Titanic. But I'm just saying, this is more glam, more elevated. So I'm taking my powder puff on the back of my hand with some powder. Not like this, okay? Still work it into your hand. And then look up on from the outer corner to the inner corner and then pressing it along the nose. With my brow pencil, this is the 4.5 Precisely My Brow from 
benefit and just highlight my beauty mark. If you have like a pimple and you want to cover it, just use a brow pencil and the tippy top of your pimple, make it into a beauty mark. A chocolate chip cookie. That's too much. So for example, here, I will go in more with my powder puff. Now for the best beauty find and most exciting launch that I have found, Essence Pure Nude Baked Blushes. I was so intrigued because I am in love with the Hourglass Baked Blushes, but those are super expensive. And yes, I want to try these out because don't kill me okay but the baked blushes from milani they're pretty i would just never reach for them because they're super glittery in a way like the, the hourglass ones i know they're much more expensive but they have this unbelievable sheen to them to where it's your skin but better these ones i have noticed a similar finish and i'm so happy that I found them. They're at Ulta. They have so many beautiful different colors. This one I'm using today is Rosy Rosewood from Miss Rose. And going in with the same, actually no, I'm gonna use this brush, KJH02. So when you're using a baked formula, this is a little bit more forgiving. It has less pigment and mimics the texture of skin more. Instead of looking super matte, this is going to look the most natural. So you can even use these on a no makeup makeup day. But this I'm going to concentrate on the actual apple of my cheeks, pressing it sort of, and then feathering it outwards into my under eye, as well as temple. Now, I have two lip options. I'll go in with this one, Line Loud Ambition Statement from NYX. This looks very similar to her lip color in the movie. Also though, I have this one, Magic Maker. This one is much more pink, and I feel like would go with this look better. I'm gonna try both, but I don't know which one is... Maybe I'll try this one, actually. Ambition statement first. This is the finished makeup look. I did a little bit of a twist on the hair, if you will, just because it wasn't really cooperating with me. But I did this like very dramatic swoop side part to add to the romantic look for Valentine's Day and like curled my hair inwards. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.